am grün bei der Haarschmutzer. Hey everybody, it's Rhino and we are back with more Hearthstone. As you can see, we've unlocked three new quests, but uh, I've been doing some curating with the new system, or the old system that I just did not understand, and the requirements for these quests are pretty low. <laughs> I have to win two games with Druid, or rogue and win two games with priest or warlock and then i have to win three games um any class so actually i will get the three game victories done when i get half of these done one and a half of these done actually if i could do math right uh, new, new developments in Hearthstone, um, probably by the time you see this episode, it will be old ha old news, but they have come out with Hearthstone for Android tablets. You can't put it on phones yet, which is a little bit irritating, and all I have is a, uh, Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, so the hardware isn't actually supported, it pops up a thing. But the program works pretty well, it does have some fuzziness trying to say the names of the characters, but the names of the characters don't really matter, so... I can play the game perfectly fine from the tablet, but I won't, because then I couldn't be recording it. I did, however, play one game, and because I played one game on the new Android tablet app, they gave me a free normal pack. So here we're gonna open our free normal pack. So I'd recommend anybody borrow anybody else's Android tablet and go and play one game. Get, get yourself a free pack. That's probably one of the easiest ways to get a free pack. Draw as many cards until you have that many as your opponent. Hmm. I don't know how you would play with that card. That'd be a little bit interesting. I saw YouTube suggested to me a video where somebody was opening like 320 packs. It was just like, I didn't watch it all, but it was just a pile of packs here. And it said 320, and he'd just sit there and open it, and then open it, and then he'd mention uh, on the few cards that were interesting to him. But it was mostly just listening uh, to whatever the guy said, because the guy says rare, legendary, uh, and I think something else, and doesn't say anything for the comments. So, I'm going to go to the shop here. 320. If you were going to... Get 60 packs, that is for $70. Let's see, 40 packs is $50. 40 packs is $10 more, 60 packs is... So it's the same amount. If you're going to do that, so 70 packs, and if you're opening 320, that's 6. So that's like $360 worth of cards this guy opened. Uh, he was a streamer, obviously. He must have been somewhat popular that people were giving him donations. He, in the description, he said that he only spent 120 of that in his own money. So people had given him money. But that is rather ridiculous. So imagine this six times as tall. Imagine spending $360 on a free game. He had so many duplicate copies that he went into his collection here, into crafting mode, and just showed us the disenchant thing. Oh, I can disenchant for 10. Look at this. I'm happy about the ability to disenchant extra cards for 10. I have 30 dust. He had... 1300 or 13,000. I think it was 13,000 dust. That's basically 
That's probably enough dust to go through and just craft gold versions of every card you want, if not every single card, period. And just, wow. And then you wonder why there are people I can't beat. Well, there, that's because there's people out there spending tons and tons of money on cards. And this, if you're having trouble winning and you're playing, here's your greatest excuse at all. They're just idiots out there, and I have to call them idiots. They're spending tons and tons of money. Um, tons and tons of money. Real world money on this game. Well, we don't do that. I don't do that. I hope you don't do that. Alright, so what were we trying to win with? I think Warrior was one of them. Druid, Rogue, Priest, Warlock. We did really well with a Warlock last time. I don't think that was any of the options. Druid, Rogue, Priest, Warlock. So is Priest one of them? God, I just read it and I can't remember it. Yes, yeah, Priest. Alright, fine. So, sorry about that, Rand. That was just jaw dropping. And as soon as I watched that video, YouTube saw that I watched that video and then suggested to me another video where a guy was opening 420 cards. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch that. I don't need to see people over and over again just wasting money and becoming so overpowered on this game. I mean, you yeah, really have to ask yourself what's the point at that point. I mean, that's the whole problem with free-to-play, or uh, pay-to-win, as a lot of them are, games. Is what's the point? If I could go buy a game, get a game for free, and then pay $200 and be so overpowered and be done with the game, I mean, why? Why am I doing that? Do I not want to have the enjoyment? Part of the fun of games, people seem to forget, is actually achieving something for your own efforts. Uh, games cannot get to the point where it's just a big red button and it says click here to win. Or it's a even easier, um, it's a connect camera and it's just looking at your eyes and says look here to win games can't be like that they will not be fun hmm. and that's all pay to win is is a more complicated way of getting you to pay to have less fun it's ridiculous That being said, all that rant being said, if, so if I became super popular on YouTube and people really wanted me to get better and see me play Hearthstone more and they kind of earmarked donations towards that, I don't know how any of that would be set up or run, but if there was something like that, I would certainly be willing to take other people's money. If that's what they really feel like it's worth it, that it's worth it. I don't know why people would feel that it's worth it that way, but if people do feel that way, I, I understand people sometimes feel differently from me, and on very rare occasions, that's acceptable. Most occasions, it's not acceptable. They're just wrong. But on some rare occasions of this, um, I would take donations to that. I would, I would certainly do a video if somebody had given me hundreds and hundreds of dollars to specifically spend on Hearthstone cards. I'd do it, and then we'd have all the cards, and then we would be um, 
uh, hopefully a lot better at this game. Hopefully a lot. Um, win a lot more. It certainly helped motivate me to continue playing this game more. Although, I don't know. Maybe people will just grow the love to watch me kind of suffer, but I'm not going to suffer this run. I'm pretty excited to play Hearthstone today. I've had a little bit of a break. Uh, the Android app was pretty cool. Hmm. Take that. We're fired up about all these new, um, new goblins versus gnomes cards, and it, they're really changing how the game was played. The game was getting a little bit stale before the expansion. They probably should have released the expansion a little bit earlier if they could, but... But now these new cards, as overpowered as they are, have changed lots of things. We, we had that great Warlock run where we're playing a demon deck we've never even played before and then we're like learning new things and succeeding a lot better. I didn't remember to actually think about that. So if we get through with quests early, I may just set one episode aside at the end just for deck building and maybe that'll be deck building one deck or deck building several hmm. Not really commenting at the moment on um, on the cards I'm picking. I don't think it's necessary. If I'm moving too fast and you're not being able to read all the cards, I'm sorry. But I've I've gotten a lot quieter. I've noticed in playing both games, just focusing more. I've also gotten a lot better at probably both games because I'm focusing a lot more instead of talking. So I think I'm finding a balance. That last choice was pretty bad. It's too much. So I'm being quieter. I admit it. Um, less things to talk about. I could talk about what's happening in the news today, but by the time you could see the um, this episode, since I'm so far ahead, it would be several weeks. Um, yes, it wouldn't surprise me. I'm recording this a week before Christmas, and it wouldn't surprise me if you don't see this until a few days past the new year. I will fight so, with honor. The light shall bring all victory. I could do to make current news there is to make wild guesses and hope some of them pay off, and then be very creative in editing, which would be too much work. Oh, as a matter of editing, that reminds me. I am sorry if you saw last episode and the credits, if you sat through the credits and you noticed that they were scrolling on and on and on and that after the first few minutes it stopped showing the, the cutesy cards that were, was really all I wanted you to see and I'm not even sure if I should bother putting up credits and going quiet because at that point I'm not really commenting on them that much. I mean, I made some commentary about them 
before I ran them, but then I'm just set, I'm just being quiet, so. Right away. I don't, I don't know if that would get flagged at some point, maybe. Um. And you could have found all those, I could have just shown you where they were. But the credits stopped showing the new cards after about a few minutes. And then I let it go and I figured, oh, it would eventually stop. And probably about the fifth time it went around in circles, I realized that it wasn't actually stopping. It was just, or at least it seemed to me. I, I didn't write down any of the names or anything, but the groupings, like they would have a European support and then it would come back and I'd look again and it, Something needs tinkering? and five minutes later it'd say like European support. And so I took from that that it was going in circles. I seemed like they had just programmed it to go in circles, which is not the right way to do it at all. That, that, that's weird. That's not the correct thing to do. So, so I, after a while, after a good long while, just turned off that. Um, turn, I just turned it off. I just decided, right you know what, this is gonna go forever. So. So I turned it off, and then I tried in YouTube to edit it, so that it would, um, would be shorter and it would stop just a few seconds after it saw the cards. So if you saw YouTube and you're going, what is he talking about? It didn't go on and on, it just cut off really short fast. Well, the reason it cut off really fast was... If that's what you saw, that means the YouTube editing software actually worked, but I couldn't ever verify if it worked. It didn't look like it did. It didn't look like it did to me. So, hopefully the editing software worked and you, anyone who sat through them did not sit for too long or they eventually figured it out and stopped. But on retrospect, the way YouTube works, they, you, you want people to watch every single second of your videos. So me putting video cinematics in as their at the end of videos is actually hurt hurting myself <laughs> it's it's not a good idea at all um, i should have um we must cleanse the sun well i should have made them their own videos and then it wouldn't be as bad to um for if nobody watched them well, i actually heard my own video by telling people to go ahead and stop if they want because everybody that does go ahead and stop um that's less engagement less engagement puts me at the lower rank not to be shown in front of new people and suggested to new people um, this is part of, I've noticed too that when I, when I talk, when I actually do talk, I, I say I'm a lot, I, I'm trying to figure out how to work on that, so I'm aware of it, but, The dam stand ready. Damn. 
Okay, sorry, I went quiet there. I... As you probably could tell, I just woke up and my brain is not working too well at the moment. <laughs> what I was trying to say is one of the new features in YouTube is I could make an introductory video that would be automatically added to all videos. And I considered that and was really happy with it, with making one for a few days, but before I actually started, I thought about the engagement and I thought about how I personally would react to something like that. And the truth of it is really, I would not react well. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't like it. Embrace the void. My fate is sealed. This should do four negative damage to everybody. So I can get one card draw on this turn. Two card draws, or I can double the health. This can I help you, sir? Jeeves is done. better. So, after really thinking about, you know, what I would, whether I would really appreciate an introductory video, whether that would increase engagement or not, I thought to myself, no, I'm probably never going to have an introductory video. It would probably be better for branding, it would probably help new people understand what I'm all about if I could do it well, which I, I don't do anything well, so I don't know why I could do that well. Um, but I think it would hurt engagement and that would hurt new people seeing seeing me. I am trying to learn some new things. There still seems to be a lot of things on Facebook that other people are doing that I just don't understand how they're doing it. There's, there's a lot of things that show up on the uh, YouTube webpage on the computer, and I think that's set pretty well. But then I watch everything on my cell phone and there are being features like the watch next feature being at, used by other people, but it just doesn't seem to work for me, and I, I don't know why. I don't know what what setting or how they're doing it. I wish I did. I want a little box to show up at the end of every video. I don't know if it's just my settings were only enabled for new uploads, and thus it will start working weeks from now, all of a sudden, when I finally published the new episodes, the, but, but it, it's not working now, I'm not getting a little, little bar on the, my YouTube, on my phone, says watch next, it seems like you can put that anywhere, where, so it pops up like 30 seconds, or at the very end of the video, I just wanted to show up at the very end of the video. I don't, I don't know why I would want to encourage people to watch the next thing, uh, the next video if they haven't even finished the first one. Hmm. Well, he's doing a lot here. Oh shoot, I probably should have done that. So, if I have that creature that takes all health, it ups and makes it damage, would double a minion's health then become half a minion's health? 
I don't think the system would understand that. I don't believe it would really work that you way. You shall not pass. I need to be able to do six damage, and I don't see myself doing that six damage. I really don't. Well played. I did look at the analytics for YouTube. I now have combined over all my many, many videos I've posted. 100 views, over 100 views, which is a milestone. It is, I think there's a saying in exercise, and what do I know about exercise since I never do any of it, um, that the first step is always the hardest, or something like that. I guess that's in exercise and true in a lot of situations. Uh, I certainly know people that... Wait, wait. They'll sit there and think things through, and I'm guilty of this too, is that I'll try and think things through and make a plan and have everything scheduled and planned in my head before I ever do the first, take the first step, and uh, you know what that usually ends up with is you just never start, and then you're just upset that you've never accomplished anything a few days later, but... So I, I tend to be more off the cuff and just say, just start. It doesn't matter if you screw up. Look at this YouTube channel. Was it, In no way am I anywhere close to being perfect. Was I perfect at the start? No way am I st perfect now. But I started. That's something. That counts for something. Uh -oh. I have three divine spirits and nothing else I can do. Interesting. I'd hate to make more competition for myself, but when I think about it, is someone injured? This is recording your videos, particularly when you have YouTube that's willing to, for free, hold your files unless you get copyright strikes or something. They'll hold your files, and you can hold them in as private videos. They've never sent me email saying you're almost a space or you only have a certain amount of space or anything like that. It's, uh, I don't think YouTube does any of that. If it does, I've never heard of it. So, recording your videos seems like just what by default everyone should do. It, it seems crazy, but yeah, that's where, where uh, the PS4 and the Xbox One were, were kind of going to, but they still haven't even gotten the streaming working yet. Uh, but if you're playing on computers and your computer can handle the recording software and you have a big enough hard drive to hold however long you're going to play for that one playthrough, you should probably be... Um, Recording your videos. Now, does that mean you have to be like me and talking over them and doing all kinds of craziness like that? No, you don't have to be like me. And in any sense, do you... And be thankful you don't have to be like me in every sense. But you don't have to talk. You could sit there and not have a microphone plugged in and just record them for posterity's sake. For you to go They'll back, I think I've got become a least slightly better gamer by watching some of my games back. What, what happens when I post, when I upload these videos, what happens is I will watch some of them mostly just to get a title name. And as I'm watching them, I'm remembering what I did, I'm realizing new things that I didn't realize I had done. Hmm. 
All I need now is the card that turns, um, that turns health into, into things. Cause she's gonna pull out something that says, destroy something with less than three attack, and then it won't matter. But yeah, how are you gonna do 28 damage to a Tom? Start working. Start working. It's gonna take you several turns. And then I'm gonna just double it too. I'm gonna have 56. I'm gonna have 56 health. If I could turn that into a 56 attack, oh, that would be so great. So, all I want to do is heal this up, and then devil it again, and then we'll you just play. Not pass. There we go, 52! Job done. There you go, 52. D give her the 52 health. Only in Arena do you get to have three of the same cards. So, in, in your regular deck, you would not be able to do this easily. Probably should have done it on this Berserker, but... The timing was not right. Yeah, so, I, I know I start conversations, I get distracted, and then I come back to them. It, it's weird, it's, I wonder. it's bad, My bad DJing, I guess, would be the best thing to call it. But, uh, yeah, everybody should record it, and the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 should just record everything straight to a private YouTube-type channels. And it could be your digital equivalent of your yearbook, your photo lab. You, you would make tons and tons of footage. But it's always up to you how much of the footage you really want other people to see. I'm starting off new, I'm showing almost all footage. But it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to stay that way. I could get really well really interested in playing a lot of Hearthstone and I wouldn't feel the obligation to um, mm. to always put 100% of everything out a lot of let's see a lot of the uh, Twitch live streamers and other live streamers are pretty. What am I saying? What am I saying? A lot of Twitch live streamers uh, play for hours and hours on Twitch, and then they'll only put up a select hour from a day on YouTube. And so they make their YouTube and their Twitch very separate. So, I'm kind of being a little weird and not doing that. I do imagine I'll play more games uh, 
Well, I guess we're gonna finally get to see what a Leaper Gnome looks like. Oh, Leper Gnome. Oh. Interesting. Whenever an enemy minion, he summons a leopard gnome. Alright, so that's not even that bad. Do this, and then I want to have four, four health to everybody. That's fine. And then that was a waste. Uh, I shouldn't have played that. I messed up. I effed that up. I was thinking of doing a new game called, it's not a new game, but a new game from me, called FTL Faster Than Light. I played it for a brief time, and it was fun and all, it just didn't grab my attention for the longest amount of time. So I was thinking... There's a lot of games in my history that are like that, where I have played them in the past, they haven't completely grasped my attention, nor I played them for a very short time. I'd be willing to play them again, make a video or two, and just kind of a tutorial, but the game, my, my experience is a kind of a review of the game. So after all these turns, he is just about ready to get rid of me completely. Um, you give it my guy. Can I help you, sir? All right, so I want some more. I, I should draw three cards at the end of this turn. Let's see. Done. He actually helped me with his... He's gonna draw three cards too. He has 15 cards in five turns he'll be out of cards. Less than five actually. This card kind of synergizes pretty good, because he could just kill his own guys. If uh, all right, so do I want to heal or do I want to kill? Embrace the void. I don't think I want to play that right now. So. Of course. 
Oh, that worked. That was fun. <laughs> so he's got this one stealth guy and then he's just got all these twos. But I gotta get rid of all of them. Two, four, six, eight. Eight damage. Just to kill all these guys. I wonder. <laughs> Oops! I didn't even think Zombie Chow would do that! I, I hadn't even thought of that! Man, if I had thought of that, I would have killed Zombie we Chow earlier! I, here I am, playing strategies I didn't even think about. I liked, I would love to think that I unconsciously thought that too, and knew that was gonna happen. But I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I think I got lucky. Lucky and stupidity. Right. The dam stand ready. Handle it. Job done. Still kinda in trouble here. This is like the first game too. It feels like it's been a really long time. I don't know if it's just because I've been talking and zoning out and talking and zoning out. But, man. This feels like it's been going on for a while. Well, it doesn't seem like it's going to be going on for much longer. I have to assume that my, this loss is my fault. I don't know what I did. I cannot think straight at the moment. I'm still sleep, obviously. But man, this had to have been my fault. Well, I do know one thing I did. I picked the wrong person to double the health on. Ready for action! I certainly did see. that. I'd put it doubled the health three times on that five mana creature that increases its attack each time it takes damage. Man, it would have been so high. But that would have been like turn five and six. I would have had to stall every other way. Probably should have done that. I don't know how it would have played out then. It would be really cool. I know I've talked about features that they should have. Features that that logically would be too difficult for them to implement. Or a little difficult for them to implement. But I would still love to see it. Is if they could take the uh, stacked cards you had. Just eliminate the the other player because you can't really factor for that but if they had taken take the exact cards the order that you drew them and just told you by their algorithm and guess how what you what order you should have played them on the life shall bring that would be at least a little bit interesting i mean you're, you're getting into like sports commentating then where these old pros or alleged old pros are talking about he, he really should have done this instead of this or that instead of this and Is a lot of it injured? to me in particular sounds like BS so yes you could do that but 
But some of it does seem to make sense too. So sometimes in the heat of battle, you don't make the best choices. I obviously don't. With two losses on the arena. I smell blood. But yep, we're back to the usual style play style of just call for the doctor. Gonna take it. Right away. We're gonna take three losses in the arena run. Every time. Not doing a great job on narrowing down our gold. We we are not. Uh, it's gonna take more time than I realized. Just to to lose some gold is taking hard, becoming harder, which is a great thing, but it's a bad thing too. So maybe every episode is an arena run if we can figure it. Arena runs are fun. A little bit harder to win, maybe, but not by a lot. Let's see. Handle it! Right away. I noticed someone, I was very briefly got on Twitch last night and noticed somebody had like an eyeball here next to their friends list and the eyeball was yellow and it had the number one and it looked like the number may have changed so let's see allow friends, friends to take my games I think this is a new feature. I don't recall this being in there before. And I guess that would make sense what that little eyeball was. Is that they were spectating. He had his friends spectating his games. Which is cool. What did... This, this one silences all other minions, huh? All your other minions. What, right what a crazy card for you to play. Hit it very hard. It got rid of stealth and the uh, Noatron's taunt and divine shield. No, I got rid of the divine shield, but. I don't see it in the description, it says taunt. There. To work. But it definitely does have taunt. Did they change the description or is something going wrong or the X just over it? I don't know. Yeah, taunt's so written so small, you could just put the X right over it and hide the entire world. Stand ready. Right away. This is very hard. Job's done. And I keep doing that. There's this medical condition. I do not believe I have it. But there is a couple medical conditions actually. Where you will just kind of black out or you'll go into um, like a waking seizures. And you'll have little seizures that are. It's not like the seizures you're probably thinking about where you are falling on the floor and swallowing your tongue and violently shaking. It's just you get 
real quiet in the middle of talking. You just stop talking and then you start again. And the person that's experiencing this does not know anything whatsoever is going on until people tell them they're doing it and they actually believe those people because it's a really hard th thing to believe <laughs> if you My fate think is about it. <laughs> Even if all your friends are known for being super honest and they never joke with you, if somebody came up to you and, and told you, hey, you're stopping for like a minute between each yeah. word, uh, that's really weird. Lots of people won't even say anything when you start talking like that. But, uh, people are very much trained to ignore any kind of speech impediments and not mention it at all. So, if they may just assume that there's some kind of speech impediment or something and they won't mention it. Which push forward is not the best way to handle it. What you should do is if you're really a friend or care about people in general, when they're in private and alone go, Hey, do you know you do this? Because it is possible, depending on their age and how many people they've talked to and how many people have been honest to you in their life. And the number of people that have been honest to you in your life can be, can wild, very wildly. It could be zero for a lot of people. It probably has been zero for a lot of people. But, so they may not know it, or they may have just developed it, and people just don't mint, and nobody else has seen it. And so why do I bring up all this? I'm, I'm just saying. I kind of feel like I'm doing that at the moment, even though I'm, I'm fairly certain I, I don't have it, that I grow have many, many nurses in my family, and they would certainly have no problem telling me if I was doing something like that. that they, in fact, having nurses in your family can be quite burdensome because they love to over-diagnose you with things all the time. My fate is sealed. And, and you can either play along with it and go, yep, I have that, or yeah, maybe I have that, whatever. Or you can just try and fight them the on it. And either way, it depends on the pe person. Some nurses are like that. I'm sure there are other nurses that um, don't want to bring their work home. And so, if you ask them for any kind of assistance, they'll begrudgingly do it, but they really don't want to. Speaking of nurses, I, I am an IT guy, and... My last IT gig, the contract, I got placed with two, it was a temporary job, so all the people were, that were hired to do this project were temporary workers. And two out of about 12 people that I worked with, within the first week, Set told me as I was talking to him, getting to know, to know I'm trying to be nice to him, which I don't know if I succeeded. I probably didn't uh, be nice to anybody at the end of the day at that job. But two of them said, "Oh, we have no interest in computers or being an IT guy. But we want to be a nurse." And I'm like, "Well, that is great. I'm happy for you that you want to be a nurse. Now get the hell out." Because it was just so incredibly insulting for somebody who is trying to have an IT career, for the person next to him, the person who's the same level as you, to say, I have no interest in being in IT and I'm just going to think I can do this job anyways and it really doesn't matter that I'm not qualified and don't have experience. One of the guys had never built a computer, knew nothing about computers at all, and I'm like, why are you here? You don't care about computers, you don't know anything about computers, so 
Why are you in this building doing this job? Go, go seek your passion. Working in IT is not a job where you can just... I'll, I'll give you, if you work at McDonald's, if you work at Walmart, or any job like that, you, it's not your career decision that you want to... Um, it's probably not what you want to work for McDonald's. It's probably not what... That's not your the career path that you've chosen. But if you've gotten into IT past the struggle, I could understand if you were just on doing on the phone customer service jobs for IT. I think that's what they thought they were signing up for, but they weren't. This was a high level thing that actually required, actually should have had people knowing what they were doing. Hey, we got a victory! As I'm ranting. Uh, but yeah, that's... It's really frustrating. Uh, think about whatever... If you are in a career that you've worked hard to be in, you will certainly be able to relate a little bit. If, if somebody came into your work tomorrow, or whatever your next work, and they said, Oh, I want to be something else that has nothing to do with the profession you've chosen has nothing the skills don't overlap really there's really no reason for them to even be in the building and yet somehow they they are on the same level as you they they're maybe higher than you i mean you kind of get that on the manager side because a manager if somebody goes and gets a managing business management degree and they just always want to be a manager straight out of college, then they're doing something different than you and they're higher than you. So it's a little bit like that, but usually managers are not actually managers. Usually they're just middle management things that, that are treated worse than you. In a lot of ways, um, and then they usually take it out on you personally. But, but I would highly recommend, as a side note, that if you're going into college, get a general manager's degree. Get a business management type degree. Do not specialize. Do do not. Go to an art school, school and become a graphic artist degree. Do, or that's just an example. But you don't specialize because you're gonna have a lot more competition for jobs uh, and a lot be eliminated from a lot of other positions. At least in your mind, if you go and get. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, for comparison, my brother, does who does on occasion watch these, uh, got a photojournalism degree about a year after th it became blatantly obvious to everyone that newspapers were going the way of the Toto, and nobody needed... Uh, somebody with a photojournalism degree to take pictures for newspapers or anything like that. There's no reason why you need to have any degree to hire somebody to take pictures. Usually you don't even hire people to take pictures. You just get pictures from random people who are at the scene off their iPhones and such. Or if you're really cheap, you go and steal the pictures from from websites a lot of times the light compels you Drag, no stupid. so his degree is about as worthless as possible and he 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 knows this we've talked about it and he agrees that so it's not like I'm revealing anything to him but because he did all that work, spent over four years getting the degree, 
or about four years. He didn't he didn't take an incredibly long extra long amount of time. He he's he's now needs to be paid to pay down the debt from that degree a lot more than if he had just not gotten a degree at all. And he's not at the moment working in a field that has anything to do with photojournalism. And so, the best suggestion I can make to him, and I don't know if it's really the right suggestion, it's just the best thought I have on it, is now he needs to turn around and go get a master's degree, two more years of debt and education in a general business uh, major. So that way he can be a manager of any job, really, and um, get paid enough to pay down the debt from the, both those degrees at that point. And he's super busy at the moment, so he's probably not going to be able to do that. Um, on that note, I would recommend everybody just everybody in general Can I help you, sir? stay in college Let if you go to college for as long as you can don't worry about the debt my theory is that it is very possible laws will come out in your lifetime or the entire economy will just collapse in your lifetime for student debt so don't worry about that if you want to go get a PhD, stay in college and get a PhD. If you can really do it. Now, if you are failing all the classes and barely past getting a bachelor's, it's probably not that smart for you to stay for a master's if you barely got your bachelor's. Unless you just really got better at the end and you're like, all right, now I'm in the groove of college and I, I know how to do it but yeah let's open this later so we're trying to war two more games for this episode we're gonna do some warlocks runs I need to redo my warlock deck but not today Yep, hide in college is really what it is. The economy at the moment is still not great. It has not been great for at least the last few years. And it's still not good. So hide in college, hope with your fingers crossed the economy gets better and the demand for jobs goes up and the pay and the demand for good jobs goes up. But And if you're gonna get in the IT, actually know about IT, just as a personal favor to me, actually know and care about IT and know and care about computers. Even you don't have to be the smartest person; you just have to want to learn. Uh, if you're working with me, almost guaranteed you're not gonna be the smartest person in that room as far as computers. Uh, certainly, in my mind, you're not. Because I'm going to just generally assume I'm the smartest person. <laughs> but, yeah. But the, the whole reason why that job was so weird and... It wasn't just those two that wanted to be nurses. It was... I, I hate to sound like this, and I, going back and thinking about it, maybe it, it's easy to sound like I was the one that was the problem, but almost every single other co-worker that I worked with, well, of the 
Let's say I said there was 12. If one of them was me, 11 others were problems. And it, the reason why that was, the real reason, is because it was a temporary project job. And the managers in charge of the project did not do any interview at all. They didn't. So there was a hiring agency in the middle, and doing temp jobs sucks in general. If you can avoid it, I'd recommend it. If people call you from temp agency and offer you a job, I know you're desperate for a job, but you really might want to think about it. I've had no luck so far with them. They, they all end, they may end very abruptly, way earlier than they say they're going to. Um, For, for really no reason, um, they they all are not really what they say. As as far as my experience, and so try not to do temp jobs. But, but yeah, they they just didn't interview anybody. So the hiring agency put up. The 11 candidates that they there were a couple of people that actually did get uh, fired eventually, but they weren't even very fast about that. And so you have this situation where um, As you jobs done. You have this situation where people who were never interviewed to see if they were qualified, never interviewed to see if they knew how to do the basic things. Most of them could do the IT jobs, they just couldn't be normal and professional employees. They were too young or too immature to, to one or the other, or sometimes both. It was just like, so it, it was really like dealing with junior high skits, kids. It was it was a nightmare. It was such a nightmare. I was so as glad for it to be over. Have. They they were as we were wrapping up the project, they were saying we're we're gonna call you back for more work, and I'm like, no, you're not. I'm gonna just kindly say no to that. Because I did not want to work with any of these people ever again. It was so awful. Think back to junior high, or if you're in junior high, think about all the people that you run into in junior high. You shall and not pass. I don't. I hope somebody's junior high experience was a lot better than mine was, but I don't think it was. So, if you had a great time in junior high and you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm uh, good for you. But, but my junior high experience sucked terribly. And just all kinds of different people, all of them upset, all of them going through raging hormones and puberty and all that. And everybody mad at everybody. Everybody trying to fight with everybody. Uh, everybody making stupid, immature jokes and comments. And imagine that in a 25 year old man. And imagine 11 25 year old men. And that's a sad statement that there weren't any women out of 12 doing the job. There was one woman hired before me. She couldn't understand the job for what little training they bothered to give anybody. And so they fired her. She was one of the two or three people that they actually did fire. It is very hard. But there was about. Job done five or six more that they needed to fire than they didn't. If you're never, if you're not going to interview people, if you're not going to get a feel if they know how to do the job and be professional, then that's a really dumb thing. How many jobs have you ever heard of where you could get hired without getting, being interviewed by the manager or the boss or the hiring team or something? I've, it's ridiculous. But if you were going to go with that strategy, if that was to be even considered a valid strategy, 
you have to counterbalance that with being just at a snap willing to fire somebody on their first mistake. On the first time you get that implication that they're not going to work out. You got to you got to do that and that sounds incredibly cruel. I I know it's everybody needs a job and all that but but it's if it's not going to work out, it's cruel to keep people in the positions. Uh, I don't know how personal I want to get into this, but there was one guy, he was a real nice guy, but he admitted to me that his last job was a IT phone customer support job with the lowest, not even a real IT job. Um, so he would just, basically, when you're doing IT on the phone, 90% of all your calls are people forgot their passwords, they're calling to reset their passwords. It is as easy, it's not really an IT job because you're following scripts, They're, your managers are much, much more interested in you keeping your call time up and and resetting passwords and getting the volume of calls down than they are you diagnosing a problem or documenting a problem or anything. They, they say they want you to document it, but mostly that's just to cover their butts. Uh, when, when somebody comes back and says it didn't, your fix didn't fix it, but you're just following a, a script, you're not really helping people. So he he said he did that job. Uh, it's 100% on the phone. It's got to be the easiest, most stressful, full sort of IT job there is. He said he had a like psychotic breakdown in that job and was carried out by um, paramedics because he couldn't take the stress. He, on separate occasions, admitted to me that he was a schizophrenic and that he would hear, used to hear voices and I don't know if I particularly believed him that he wasn't still hearing voices, but he was a real nice guy and I felt sorry for him. But in no way was he ever going to succeed in IT and how, I sounded cruel, but I told him, Straight up, I said, you, you can't. You can't work in IT. You need to go back on... Uh, he was on... Uh, disability for, for his mental condition. I said, you need to go back on disability. And he was working with Walmart part-time when he was on disability because it limited his hours. I'm saying, I'm telling him, you need to do that. You need to just be settled with that for the rest of your life or find a different career path because you can't do IT. IT is an incredibly stressful job and somebody can't, somebody with mental conditions cannot work in IT. Not as bad as this guy. Sure, I don't want to generalize. I'm sure plenty of people can and do do IT, but when you yourself are saying you can't handle the stress of the least stressful IT position, it's only going to get worse. And so, I bring that up as an example of it is sometimes kinder to be cruel. To Go just done. tell them the truth and say, get out. You, you can't. You're not going to succeed. And he really didn't succeed. Uh, part of schizophrenia, I learned a lot working with him about schizophrenia uh, in my observations of him. But part of his his schizophrenia is just kind of this rapid creation of reality, of false realities. So if somebody would tell him to do something, he would um, he would start doing things in a different way that was the wrong way, just because he he thought that was the right way. And then when you would ask him about things, he would come up with these long-winded, sounded totally legi legitimate, but they were actually BS explanations of stuff. Uh, he could consider. tell tell you just paragraphs and paragraphs about something that's totally wrong to support what he believes. And it's not that he was just a good liar or anything. That's just kind of how schizophrenia works, is that you get these rapid thoughts and you can just keep on explaining this and this. He kept trying to explain math things, which was really funny. 
because you cannot explain a incorrect math uh, calculation away. But he he would go on and on trying to explain it, and I'm like, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how much you try to explain it. Math is numbers. Numbers are always right. Uh, he would, he got wrapped up in by another coworker who was obsessed with winning the lottery and he was like oh yeah I, if i do this and this and this i'll increase my chances of of uh, uh winning the lottery he kept trying to tell me if you buy two tickets then you have twice the the number of that you've cut your odds in half and that's not how odds work so the lottery commission would say you have like one in a million chance of winning. So he would say, well, if you buy two, then you would have one in 500,000 chances of winning. And I'm like, it doesn't work that way. It, it doesn't. You have two in a million chances still. The odds don't change that way. It's complicated math, but you don't simplify it. And I kept saying, you don't simplify it. You just don't simplify it when you're talking odds. And he would not understand it. I checked myself many times just to make sure I wasn't the one BSing him. Because, you know, it's possible. It's possible I was the wrong one. So I, I'd go and look it up, the math problems. I would go and talk to other people uh, that I trusted that I knew were good at math. And they'd, they'd all come back and go, yeah, you're totally right. But he could not believe it because he was schizophrenic and because he was naive and because he was young. But he would not believe it. He would come up with long-winded explanations. Consider. And it, what was really scary about this rapid false reality creation that he could do, there... One of my nurse family members told me the actual term, but I don't remember what it's called, was just how thin the barrier between reality and fantasy was for him. How in less than a second, in less than one word, he could shift from things that we all know that all society agrees upon as being real to things that that nobody but him believes that it's real. And it, there was no no uh, no line there at all. No line there at all. And let's see, I th one more game. Since I want to talk about this guy, this guy was super, super interesting. I really did like him. I wanted the best for him. It's just that the best for him was not for him to be working with me. The best for him was not for him to be working in IT at all. But one of the scariest things about his disease, which I do not feel he was treating as well as he thought he was. I mean, I always made an effort to enforce it to him to make sure he takes his medicine always, to make sure he sees doctors' things and such. But one of the scariest things is he was a... He was a... Um, he was a very religious person, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with believing in what you believe. But he would try to slip in. He would, on some occasions, say when he was having schizophrenic episodes that he was hearing voices. But then he would try every now and then to slip that in and say that demons were talking to him. And I don't think he fully would was willing to admit that to to believe that there were never actually demons talking okay. to him and that his disease was just a mental condition it that i i could never really pin him on it i don't know if he was fully aware 
about it. Um, so it gets really scary there where his belief in a higher power was in some cases feeding directly back into his mental disease. And that's, I'm not saying that's true for all people who are mentally diseased. I'm not saying that's true for anybody else but him. But I personally saw it in him. And as I talk to him more, because I talk to him a lot, uh, it was a very, very interesting case study, if nothing else, that I realized he was going to a um, little trick. If people say they're going to a church that has faith in the name, usually that means it's a non-denominational, not affiliated church that a lot of times it means they have faith healing in it. And so, so he, one of his, the ch I asked him what church he goes to, he said something with faith, and I said, oh, is that one that has faith healing and speaking in tongues and all that? And he goes, yes. And I, and I just cringed, and I'm like, I'd really like, like if you would go to a church that was a little bit more normal in my mind. I don't know the right way to say that. But, but if, but what I meant is, um, hey, give me a in talking to him, he would go every Sunday and he would get riled up emotionally and, and gibber, speak gibberish and call it speaking in tongues and shake and dance in spastic, ridiculous ways that really, really felt like for him every Sunday for him was just a socially acceptable time for him to make, to allow his disease to be worse. I mean, really just allow him to act crazy around other people and not be judged. And he kind of needed the judgment. He, he needs people to tell him what is socially acceptable, what is crazy, what isn't, because his mind is diseased and he doesn't know what's crazy or not. He can't tell the difference. So I didn't push him to not go to his church, but I did suggest that he, I, I wished he would go to a different church, a more denominational based one of any, any denomination that he found, found one that uh, particularly churches that don't have any affiliation or any denomination. Well then, when you go to a church like that, you have to look at their creed. You have to figure out what they say they believe in and what they actually act upon each week and act like they believe in, too, because a lot of times that can be really, really different. Um, so, I pushed him that way. He probably didn't respond to any of that. I said, uh, I pushed him since he was kind of fresh out of college, uh, a technical school. I pushed him to, to go back and get more training and uh, because he didn't know anything about computers like any of them. And so I said, you know what, you should go back, you should get more training, you should get certifications. And I said, while you're there, you should make some more friends and go to the student ministry groups that are all at your church and meet with people closer to your age and, and all that so i mean i really really was doing everything i thought i could to try and help this guy because i was I felt sorry for him really i mean i kind of liked him he was he was a nice guy but he just i mean what can you do you can't can't help everybody. And I'll leave it at that with that interesting story. Uh, I don't know about talking about people. I guess I have to. I guess I need things to talk about. Out, so I'll talk about people. I don't know if I. I don't think I said anything that would be actionable, as the lawyers say. Uh, it was definitely provable that that he had schizophrenia, so it's not like I'm making claim that's false. Hmm. Druid of the Fang, that might work in a deck. 
So open that pack. Um, uh, yes, he was. That, that's about all the story about him, anyways. But so, uh, I didn't say his name, so you won't be able to figure out who I'm talking about, anyways. That's it for this episode. Uh, I hope my ramblings were at least entertaining. I would love to get some feedback if other people have any stories like that. That would be very interesting. And I, I would, if I got stories like that and they just didn't read like they were totally made up. So don't send me a made up story and, um, and, and have a joke punchline at the end or something. Because I wouldn't read that on there if I, unless I didn't get the joke, which is possible. But if I'd love to hear other people's experiences, other deals. I, I don't want to hear IT horror stories about how people had to call IT and it was a nightmare and they were jerks. Because if somebody was a jerk to you, there's one or two things happened. Either their manager has a policy set up or their management, maybe not their exact manager, has a policy out set up where they have to be a jerk or they are a jerk in reality or that you somehow push them into acting as a jerk whether you intended to or not so i want to hear horror stories we've all have horror stories it, it sucks but i can't do anything about it and i'll i will re read those that's it for this episode. We got one quest done, and we will get the next quest done with the next victory. So next episode, Druid and Rogue. I'll go ahead and next episode buy another entry into the arena. If it's a Druid and Rogue, we'll do another arena run. If it's not a Druid and Rogue, we'll save that entry for the uh, episode after next episode. Anyways, thanks for listening to my stories. Uh... I hope they were entertaining. At least I talked. So I, I finally woke up. I went from really just being quiet and, and falling asleep while playing the game to actually talking pretty consistently. Anyways, as always, it really does help out for you to like, share, and subscribe. Watch every second of every video you watch from beginning to end. At least let the player play. It doesn't matter if you actually see it or not, but... If you start it, let it go all the way to the end. Uh, please. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good evening.